and the executive director for the Texas Public Policy Foundation, Kevin Roberts. Gentlemen, nice to have you both on. We appreciate it. Uh, Mark, I'd like to start with you. The government and these numbers, they are just shocking now. The government, and these are government estimates, so who knows how accurate they are, uh, whether or not they're underreporting the numbers, quite frankly. They estimate between 18,000 and 22,000 kids could cross the border in April alone. My question, where are these kids going to be placed? They're, they're already packed in there like sardines. Uh, many people we know are just being released into the lower 48 as it is right now. So, Rob, look, and it's not just about UACs. I know for obvious reasons we're focused on unaccompanied minors. Mm. But look, this month in March, we're anticipating 150,000 apprehensions. That's a 350% increase of total apprehensions from this year, last year. Families uh, units are skyrocketing. As you said, the UACs. And the bottom line right now under this administration's policies, where are they going to go? They're going to be released into the interior United States, as they are right now. The contrary to what the administration is trying to get the American people to believe, which is false, is if you're an unaccompanied minor outside of Mexico, you're coming in. The borders are open to you. If you're a family now from the Western Hemisphere, the borders are open to you. You're coming in. So far, between unaccompanied minors and families, this administration has released over 45,000 people who have tried to illegally enter this country wow. into the interior United States. Yeah, That's that makes, a that makes a crisis. every state, including Alaska and Hawaii, every state is now a border state because once you're in the U.S., you can travel a lot more easily. Uh, Kevin, I, I just read your op-ed. Uh, this I hadn't thought about before, but you make a great point, suggesting that Texas should use some of that stimulus money from that $2 trillion debacle to finish the border wall. People criticize President Trump because he only got 440 miles of the wall built, but those 440 miles were doing their job with the exception of those massive gaps that remain in the wall right now as a result of Joe Biden's executive orders. That's exactly right, Rob. As, as Mark knows well, he's been to the border many times, as I have with my staff. The wall works. And so our proposition from, from our foundation is let's solve two problems with one solution. Number one, we have trillions of dollars that Congress is sending to the states. Texas stands to receive $30 billion in funds that it really doesn't want because of the strings attached. Let's take $5 billion of that and finish the wall, which solves the second problem, which is this massive surge including of unaccompanied children, probably being trafficked by cartels. And let's fix the problem, as I think the rest of America would expect Texas to do. Yeah, we should also note two things. It was the Border Patrol that originally requested that the government build the wall. It wasn't Republicans. I feel like every time they're like, oh, they're just saying that because they're on Newsmax. Also, our southern border between the U.S. and Mexico is the busiest border crossing on the planet. So there's clearly an issue down there. Mark, I, I, I want to bring you into this, uh, this Yahoo poll. The results finally came out. 1,500 Americans were surveyed, which is a pretty good number. 62% disapprove of the way the Biden administration is handling the immigration problem. My question, are the wheels starting to come off the, uh, the Biden wagon already here, not even 70 days into his first term? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's a microcosm of uh, that exactly it, Rob. But I, I look, at the end of the day, no matter how hard they try to convince us that what we're seeing is we're not seeing, the American people get it. They understand what six thousand apprehensions a day mean. They understand that we're, we're projected to see 1.4 million that, uh, in this calendar year. That's greater than the, the size of Dallas, Texas. I could go on and on with this stat. The Americans see, uh, see it from their eyes, so this doesn't surprise me at all. I should uh, reference, by the way, I appreciate you sending us. We're showing photos, Mark, that you sent to our, uh, our producers. Uh, a really, again, a unique vantage point uh, of the situation down there. Because guess what? The media no longer has First Amendment rights on our southern border because the Biden administration has issued a blackout. I applaud people like Senator Ted Cruz and James Langford for going down there and giving us uh, photos and video. Otherwise, we just don't have access uh, uh, to what's going on. So we appreciate that. Kevin, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas uh, recently fired several members of the Homeland Security Advisory Council. Why would he do something like that right now? Well, I, let me just say very boldly that, that we need more firing to happen in the Biden administration as it pertains mm. to Homeland Security. He would do that because just speaking as a, as a policy professional here, putting whatever my philosophical biases may be off to the side, Rob, 
This is a policy failure of huge proportions. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to say it's even unprecedented. And so what we need to do, first of all, as we look at solutions is to make sure that we have the right personnel making these key decisions. And the very first thing those personnel need to be doing is accepting that the policies that President Biden put in place within hours of taking the oath of office, not days, within hours, have reversed the great successes of the Trump administration, including by my friend Mark Morgan. We have to return to those policies done by personnel who know that there's a real crisis on the southern border. Unbelievable. Uh, former President Trump, Mark, said over the weekend that he will visit the southern border. And I, first of all, you know, whether or not he goes, if he is there before Joe Biden is there, what does that say to the American people? By the way, Kamala Harris hasn't gone either yet. Yeah, well, there's a shocker. Kamala Harris, the, 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 the individual when she was a senator, called ICE, according to the KKK, wanted to abolish ICE and didn't believe that people illegally enter uh, our, our borders and violate the, the rule of law uh, should not be held accountable. So no shocker there. Look, it, to me now, when President Biden goes, it's too late. Uh, look, he, he, he's already signaled with, with everything that's going on. I think Kevin just did a great job of explaining uh, what he's dismantled. He sent a message loud and clear that, that you, they want to erase the word illegal from illegal immigration. They want to erase our borders. And, and look, that's their strategy all along. You know, Rob, a lot of people said, hey, look, they, they, they don't have a strategy. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. I would respectfully disagree. They know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Their goal is to release people as fast as humanly possible in the interior United States, not deport them because they see a perceived political benefit from that. They're executing their strategy as intended. All right, I wasn't going to go there, but I am now, Kevin. Final question since Mark uh, just raised this very important point. Uh, you hear Democrats criticize Republicans when we say, okay, the goal is to turn states like Texas and Arizona permanently blue. Demographics equal political power in any democracy. If you shift the demographics of any given area, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, California, uh, ultimately that will mean different people are getting elected. Is that the goal here, Kevin, ultimately? Absolutely. This is not incompetence, Rob. It's really important for your viewers to know that. This is intentional. It is a long, decades-long effort by the radical American left to change America. And let me tell you, as a Texan, that those of us who are very proud of what happened in Texas last cycle, which is that we didn't have a blue wave, it wasn't even a blue puddle, know that the radical American left wants to come into this state with Ill illegal aliens voting illegally. So not only do we need to fix the border crisis, we need the Texas legislature, as I think it's going to do in the next few weeks, to really tighten our election laws. It is crucial that we stop this problem at the southern border if we want to keep Texas Texan. It's also, let's be honest, it's taking away our rights as American citizens, and that should concern all of us. Um, gentlemen, we appreciate it. Kevin Roberts, Mark Morgan, good to see you again. Come back on and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've got